full committee center, and I want to start by thanking the Appropriations Committee for their tireless work. Uh, I know there were a lot of long days, late nights, the difficult decisions that were made by members of both parties in the committee room to try to get to a compromise. And when I first looked at it, as it was coming out of appropriations, I really wanted to support it in comparison to the look at it compared to the governor's proposal. It looks pretty good. It's not as awful. The problem is, the longer you take a look at it, and if you look at it and judge it on its own merits, the more you realize it falls far short of main values and main ideals. As has been mentioned, the budget discussion got off on the wrong foot because there was a suggestion of this great crisis due to rapid increases in enrollment in the program. Well, it didn't take long to figure out that increased enrollment was not the driver of these costs. It also became very clear that the numbers were unreliable. <coughs> I'm deeply concerned that we are here tonight filling a hole that we are not sure is the right size. We have been unable to get independent confirmation of the numbers, in the waning days of the committee process, the Department of Health and Human Services is not as helpful as it seemed like they ought to be. We need to know whether these numbers are accurate. Imagine if, instead of making cuts, we were sitting here with a pile of taxpayer money and we were starting to shovel it into this big hole. Would you let us just keep shoveling that not knowing where the bottom of that hole was? The hole might be much bigger than has been projected, or it might be much smaller. We might run out of money on April 1st, or we might not. We do not have solid, independent verification of these numbers. And until we have those hard data to work with, how can we confidently make changes that are going to affect real people? in very powerful ways. When I was first running for legislature, I spent a lot of time to endorse and have every election set. And one of the things that people have been most concerned about is access to health care. Maine has had a pretty good track record of expanding access to health care to make sure more people can get the treatment that they need. This budget rolls it back. We're talking about more than 20,000 people that will lose health care under this proposal. That's not something that any of us can be proud of. But we start doing doors in November. We're going to find people who've lost their health care or who are about to lose their health care because of this proposal. They're not going to be able to get the better care they need. They're going to have to go to the hospitals, and we're all going to bear the cost. So you take health care away from people who need it, and you drive up people's health insurance premiums at the wrong time. I don't know anyone that I talked to that's running for office who thought I should get rid of health care and drive up health insurance premiums. Unfortunately, that's the road that this proposal takes. I'm also concerned about the process. I've already mentioned the issues around understanding whether this crisis is real or not, how big a hole it is, and whether we're really going to run out of money. We also know, we're also being asked tonight to trust the committee process, to have faith in the process, have faith in what the committee came up with, except for some people who are happy to turn them in or not. I have things I don't like in this budget. How about getting rid of the termination of benefits for parents who need it? How about not relying on some false assumption that adults who are disabled to need care can really somehow get by a program that was costing $80 million. We're now going to try to deliver for $40 million. Attrition is not going to be that fast. So you're talking about serious cuts, either to the benefits, or we're going to be back here in October with a whole new crisis around that issue with no choice for the next legislature but to make further cuts. 
I understand the difficult choices that need to be made. And we've made them every single year at the legislature. I've yet to see a budget that accomplished any great uh, government expansions. But what you try to do in your budget document is remain true to your core values. Making sure that we're expanding opportunity for many people, not taking it away. Making sure that we are protecting the safety net in this time of terrible economic turmoil. Not slashing holes in the net. That's what we're doing tonight. The reality is, despite the rhetoric, main care is not spiraling out of control. The money that has been spent on main care has been relatively flat since 2006. It's a little bit of a blip when the federal government gave us some additional resources. This is not a program that is spiraling out of control. And it does not justify the deprivation of health care that is going to be the result of this budget. I think we need to solve this problem by one, understanding the size of the problem. Let's figure out, with independent verification, how deep this hole is. Why do we cut people off of health care if we don't need to? What if the hole is only $80 million and you end up with a $40 million surplus at the end of the year? At that point, it's too late to help some of these people that were hurting. I think you get the facts, the data first, and then you ask. The second, this part of amendment we put on, we have rightly tried to protect the hospitals of this state by extraordinary service to our communities and to our people. Unfortunately, we haven't given the same attention to the people who are receiving health care on the other end. We need a balanced approach that recognizes the needs of many people. I want to support the appropriations committee but I think that this falls short. It is not their fault. They were deal, dealing with inaccurate numbers that kept moving. They were being dealt with false justifications. And they were being dealt with an administration who was fighting every step of the way instead of coming to the table properly. properly. Good solutions can be, fine, can be found when people come together in the spirit of good faith and really get to the bottom of it. And that requires not just all of us, but the executive branch as well. Thank you, Mr.